folks. Glad that you joined us today in this broadcast that I'm doing because I'm really concerned about something in the faith of believers, and that is really how faith operates. We somewhat have an idea of how it operates, but then to really put it into action and into motion is a different thing. I want to read a couple scriptures to you that are just profound. They're so amazing that we don't have, we, we don't believe. We, we never take the time to really stop and say, you know what, I believe that. So let me read these scriptures. One is in 2 Peter chapter 1. It says, as his divine power, now this is the power of God, has given to you all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Let me read another verse. When the father was speaking to a son, he says, all that I have is yours. Is that true or is it not? Is it just some kind of saying like a bumper sticker on a car that we put and we don't really believe it? I believe it. And I know that you believe it. That the father says everything he has is mine also says that it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. These are amazing statements. And if anybody else made those statements other than Jesus, I would have just said, oh, you're just blowing smoke. You're just trying to promote something. But these are actual statements to be believed, not only to be believed, but to be lived in. So this brings me to the beginning of faith. What is faith? And I know definition, scriptural definition, but faith to me is two things. One thing is that you do believe these statements. I believe in Jesus. I believe him. The second part of faith is to be able to receive what he has said. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, it says that it is impossible to please God without faith. And faith is is first believing in him and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So you see the two things. You see the fact of believing and the other fact of receiving. Many of you are great givers. You give, you give finances, you give your time, you give your energy, you give your talents. You are uh, great givers. But the problem is, is that we are not good receivers. We must learn how to receive from God. Because I'm telling you today that he wants to give you so much. He already gave you Jesus, so that, that's limitless. He wants to give you so much. I'm not just talking about money, but it includes that. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you success. This scripture, he's already given you everything that pertains to life. Well, what pertains to your life? What do you need in your life? And he's also given you godliness. Godliness is my relationship with God, my changing of my very person, my very nature of becoming more and more Christ-like. Well, the part of receiving is important, and to really get this across to you and to give you a great understanding about receiving and how it is and what it is, I have with me today my grandson. This grandson is Jake. Jake graduated from high school this year and he was awarded a uh, sports or football scholarship to Hastings, Nebraska. And what his position is, is he is a wide receiver. He knows what a receiver is. And so, Jake, I want to ask you something. What makes a good receiver? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think being able to catch the ball, obviously, and then I think being able to run a good route. Um, obviously, the route has to be good. It has to shake the defense. And I think being able to read the defense and make adjustments to your route while you're playing is also really important. But I think probably the main thing is just catching the ball. Yeah, it, it would it would benefit to be able to catch the ball. Were you really good at it, catch the ball? Yeah. <laughs> so it was something that kind of came natural to you where you were just able to catch the ball. Um, not really, actually. I, was, I used to really be bad at catching the ball. Um, yeah, I don't know. My, so I played football freshman year, and 
I played receiver. That was my first time playing receiver, and I was really bad at it. I dropped a lot of footballs, but I was tall, so they kept putting me into the play and letting me play. But um, I still, I just really liked playing receiver, and I really liked playing football, and I really liked, like, the feeling of catching the ball, I just could never really do it. So um, I just got one of my friends over the summer to just help me catch the ball. And over the summer, we worked a lot, worked really hard, and I ended up making varsity my sophomore year. Well, the sophomore year. Yeah. So it was practice that made you learn to catch the ball. Yeah. And can you remember the timeline? How much? How much time did you give in to learning how to catch the ball? Um, I, I don't know that. So we had practice, we had a two hour long practice five days a week during the summer. And then me and my, my buddy would stay like maybe an hour and a half after that. So like three and a half hours a day of just trying to get good at catching the ball and <laughs> trying to practice playing receiver. But it's amazing to me that you give three and a half hours of time a day to learn how to catch the ball. Yeah. Well, I mean... It, we were learning, but we just uh, we just really liked playing. Like, we just liked catching the ball. It was fun for us. It wasn't like difficult to like, hey, we should stay after practice and get better. It was just like, hey, you want to throw after practice? Yeah. See, this is this is real interesting to me because as a believer, when we're to believe to be able to catch, that is so important that I take these verses, the promises of God in the Bible. And I, I catch them. Uh, explain to me somewhat, though, about catching. I, I'm really nervous. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> I was never a, a great catcher. Or, uh, you know, how, how, do you, how do you catch the ball? Um, well, you have to look it into your hands. Like, when you see it coming through the air, you have to, like, watch the ball the whole time, and you have to catch it. And you have to look it all the way into your hands and then all the way into the tuck. Because if you don't, if you, like, let's say you catch it, but then you look away and you try to make a move, there's a good chance you're going to drop it because you're not going to think about catching the ball all the way. Um, and then another thing is grip strength. My grip strength was really bad. So I would do, like, when I was at home, this was during COVID, so I was yeah. doing online school. So when I was, like, on my Zoom call, I would get a tennis ball or two tennis balls and I'd just squeeze them in my hand. Yeah. Or I'd, like, throw them up and try to catch them out of the air and... I don't know. It's mostly just watching the ball into your hands. I feel like that's the biggest thing that people forget. So it's real fascinating that to catch, as it were, the promise of God, I have to be focused. That's what I mean. We, we read our Bible, we just generally read it, and we're not focused. If you'll get focused and learn how to bring that word into yourself, you, you don't just keep it out of you, bring it in, to make it personal. Like that verse, instead of as his divine power has given to us all, I would say as his divine power has given to Job. So I take that and I make it personal. I, I hold it into my heart. This is what the Bible really uh, teaches us is that the word of God was not meant for the head. It was meant for your heart. You, and you practice this. We're not good at it at first. And Jake saying that he didn't even know how to catch a ball, but he was put in a position. And the Lord puts us in positions of life. He puts us in places that many times we feel unqualified. We feel like we're not in the right place. He puts you there to practice. Practice catching the Word of God. Practice catching the Word of God. I challenge you today, as Jake said, he spent three and a half hours, but it was fun. And so make this fun. Make this not heaven, hell, I'm going to hell if I don't read this right. That, no, 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 no. He is trying to teach us to receive the Word to such a degree that the Bible says the Word becomes flesh. Now, Jake, let me ask you, did you ever fumble a ball? Once you caught it, did you ever fumble it? Yeah. Well, that's not a very good, yeah, but very often? No. I only, I think in my four years of playing in high school, I only fumbled once. Well, that, well that's pretty phenomenal. <laughs> See, there's, there's many things we'll ask, but uh, to be able to catch a promise, 
and then not drop it. So uh, we drop the promises. There's been many, many times I believe God for something and then I just, uh, I just forget it. You know, you don't, you don't follow through with it. You don't really catch it and bring it in. So don't worry. When you fumble once, you didn't quit. Mm -hmm. See, that was that was probably the most important thing. Yeah. Now, when you did fumble, can you even remember what you thought about? Did you make a mental adjustment or? Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, I fumbled and I got up and I was I was really upset. I tried to like argue with myself that it wasn't my fault. I, I don't know, but then I just realized like I should have just like focused and looked the ball all the way in because that's what happened. I I caught the ball and then I tried to run without like tucking it into my body. And so a guy came in to tackle me and I dropped it. And so then you just kind of shake that off, forget about it, and go to your next play. Yeah, because if I didn't, I would have been all in my head for the rest of the game and then I would have been no help to my team. Yeah, yeah. So that's what happens. We get condemned. Oh, I should have done this, should have done better. And we carry that instead of just playing the game. So just let's just keep going. I want to ask you about the route because that is real interesting when you said, of course, you have to learn to catch the ball, but then you have to run the route. Mm -hmm. So what what is that? Um, well, it's set play. Usually you get a play from your coach. And um, so our offense was kind of cool. So we would have like set routes that you know, we'd see on the playbook and have to run. But if we saw the defense doing something like specific, we could change the route so that we could beat that defense. Oh. So like, it's kind of hard to give examples, but um, let's just say like, so I play receiver, there's a cornerback on me. If he's in a certain spot that we're not used to him seeing, then I can like make a little signal to my quarterback and we change the route and I'll be open most likely. So these, these routes you already know about. Mm -hmm. Who calls the routes? Uh, the coach. So he gives it to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. How does he get that information to the quarterback? Uh, he'll just, uh, actually I think we usually had like a little wristband and the coach would just say a number and that number would relate to a play and he'd find that number and tell the whole team to play. Would he yell it from the sidelines, the coach? And you guys could hear it mm -hmm. and then in the huddle, what did you do in the huddle? Uh, our quarterback just told everyone to play, read it out loud so that everyone heard it and made sure we were all on the same page because that would happen too. Like maybe a guy heard the wrong number or something and he just wants to make sure everyone knows the right play. Um, and then if ever, anyone like doesn't know what they're supposed to do on that play, he, the quarterback would facilitate all that and make sure everyone was doing the right job. Did you ever get in the huddle and just decide I'm gonna run my own route? No. <laughs> You just, you don't do that. You, you obey what the quarterback is saying. Yeah. See, this is comparing this and illustrating it with Ward. I, I see a huddle. Well, let me, how many times did you huddle? Uh, every play. Before Not every just play. once a game or once a quarter? No, every play. Every play you huddled. See, that's prayer. Prayer is a time where you huddle with God and you get in that huddle. Now, uh, did you ever... Well, I'm sure during the game, were you upset with the quarterback? Mm -hmm. What would you, if you were upset with him, what, why? Why were you upset with him? Uh, usually because he wouldn't throw it to me when I thought I was open. <laughs> so what did you do then? How did you resolve that? I just tell him, I'd try to be like as calm and like not coming off as aggressive as possible, but I'd just be like, hey, like that corner sunk down and I was open that play. Just if we, if we run that play again, look for that. So you, you were able to at least communicate to him, participate in the conversation. Now the other players, you got 11 players in the huddle, then they, did they ever get upset with the quarterback? Can you remember like a guard? Oh that? yeah. Um, my senior year, we had a, we had like the first quarterback that we had, um, he took a long time to throw the ball and he'd kind of sit back in the pocket for a long time and our offensive line wasn't great, so he didn't have a lot of time to throw, and so he didn't have the luxury of sitting back there and waiting for things to open up. And so the line would get mad at him a lot because they would give him enough time to make the right play, 
but he just would sit back there and, and wouldn't do anything. He just wouldn't throw the ball. Well, this, in not trying to push our illustration too far, the quarterback is the Holy Spirit. He's the one calling the plays, but he gets the play from the father, who's the coach. So the father gives the Holy Spirit the play. The Holy Spirit communicates to us the route. This is where I believe in receiving. You have to know the route, which is the will of God for your life. The Bible does it a little bit different, but it uses a sports illustration about running a race. Run the race that's set before you. Jake, you have a route, I have a route. My route is gonna be different than yours. I'm playing the tackle. You're playing wide receiver. Now, see, I can bellyache. Well, I wanna catch the ball. You're not gonna catch the ball because that's not your position. The Holy Spirit wants to get the promises to every one of us. He has a particular route. And the huddle is your time of prayer. It's a time of communication, communion, really. It's a communion with the Holy Spirit. I huddle up with him. And as Jake did, I can communicate to him. Hey, I'm wide open. Why don't you throw me the ball? What's going on? And he communicates back. But there is a great trust developed between the receiver and the quarterback. There has to be somewhat of a connection between the two. This is why developing a relationship with the quarterback or the Holy Spirit is that you begin to trust him and he begins to trust you. He knows you're going to run the route. He knows you're going to be there and he's going to throw the ball in the place that the route says to be. Now, has the quarterback thrown the ball without you being there yet? I mean, is it so synchronized that he throws the ball regardless of where you're at? Mm -hmm. And so you're supposed to be there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big kind of what we tell each other. Like me and a couple other receivers will tell him, like throw the ball, throw the ball to an area and not to me. Because mm. I'll, I'll find a way to get to that area. You just need to throw the ball there. And you got to trust me to get to that area and catch the ball. So that, that's a, a really very interesting thing because he's not just watching the player. He wants, I'm gonna throw the ball right over here. You, you need to get there. So this is why obedience is important. This is, this is why the Lord says, if you forgive, then my blessing will be upon your life. So the route is I need to forgive. As I forgive, I'm gonna be in the right position to catch the ball. Uh, bitterness and anger is not in the route. So many times we have these areas of our life that the Lord's trying to teach us a route. Many times we get upset. Why am I not blessed? Why am I not catching the promises? They're not being thrown to me. You're not quite yet in the proper place. He will throw the promise to you. The forgiveness, the letting go of bitterness, uh, anger, all of these things are somewhat your, the defense trying to stop you from running your route. Did you ever run into that problem? Jake, what, how did the defense play against you? What, what was their purpose? To stop me and our team, I guess. Um, a big thing that I noticed was, you know, teams would watch film on us and we had a lot of similar plays so they'd see that and they'd start to cut off some of the some of the things that I would do and some of the big plays that I would have they would cut those off um, I guess an example would be like if I'm running a post which is I just run straight and then cut at an angle they used to have only just one safety at the very top mm -hmm. and then they started to see that and they'd put two safeties so that they cut off that post and oh. I couldn't go anywhere oh. wouldn't that happen what would you do is it I mean most of the time our quarterback would either just throw like, I don't know, like a, like a one yard pass. I wouldn't really gain much or he'd get sacked because yeah. I couldn't like, I could try to run past that guy and I could try to set him up, set him up in a different way to try to get past him. But that was his whole job was just to stop me. So it just kind of cut off the play and, and that's a good, I guess a good, like a good part on the defense. They did their job and we didn't do ours. 
So. Well, you were you were hindered from running that route. Yeah. So that's exactly what the devil does: is that he throws his opposition to stop you from running the route. He can't really stop the quarterback. He can't stop him from throwing, but he can stop you and I from running that route. Once I run the route, there's the blessing. I catch it, I, I bring it in to my life. Now, one, once you catch the ball, then what do you do? Try to score a touchdown. <laughs> so you you knew how, you had to know what to do once you catch it. Mm -hmm. See, if I'm playing and I catch the ball, I'd be so excited, I've caught the ball, I caught the ball. <laughs> then they just kill me. <laughs> and so you at least know then you got to run. Mm -hmm. So what? How did you run? What did you do? Um, I think that's also a good a good trait for a good receiver is they know what to do after they catch the ball. So they have a good awareness of where the defense is around them. So they kind of have an idea after they catch the ball of where they're going to run to. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know, trying to juke out defenders, trying to outrun them, I don't know, different kinds of things, but I'm just trying to score once I get the ball. Yeah, I, I think it's just fascinating because it's once we – have the promise of God. We've ran our route. In in Christianity, we uh, walk by faith. We run by faith. So it's my confession. I can I can catch a promise, but then I begin to speak against the very promise that God has made, and I don't know how to run. I don't. I run. I make my uh, action and my motion by my confession. So this is another thing that. The defense, have the defense ever try to push you or hit you in your face or anything? Yeah. Well, what's the rule on that? Um, they just can't grab my face mask. And then after five yards of my route running, they can't like try to push me or like tackle me or something. They yeah, have to they, let me run. Yeah, they, they have to let you run that route if you get past. So it is. Well, you, get, you run your route, the devil can't stop that. It, you, you just learn. That's why the huddling is important. That's why knowing the will of God is important and being able to receive. So I encourage all of us to think more about receiving. Look to receive. Don't uh, See, we just give and we give and we never look for anything in return because we think it's not right. We think that for some reason we have strings attached to our, to our giving. But in our walk with God, in our relationship with God, we must learn how to receive. Jesus was incredible. He, he was the perfect player. He's the perfect pattern to follow. And I'm always thinking of the story of when they were to feed 5,000 people. Can you imagine 5,000 men, plus their wives, if they were married, kids, he had to feed all of them a lunch. All he had was a little boy's lunch. A little boy came and said, hey, here's my lunch. I don't know what you can do with it or what you can do about it. And so, in the natural, you'd think you're so limited. What could I do with this <laughs> little boy's lunch? But the Bible says he looked up into heaven. I think that's where he huddled. He saw past the problem. He saw past the situation. And he saw that his father provided everything he needed. And he was able to then receive all that the father had for him for that whole crowd and he began to line up the crowd, he began to give instructions, but all those instructions were first given to him from his father. So believe and receive. Take the promises of God, receive them in, make them part of your heart, part of your life, and begin to expect great blessings, great receptions from the Lord. Well, Jake, I really appreciate you being here. And uh, what were some of the records you broke in, in uh, Flagstaff in your football career? Um, I broke the record for most receiving yards in a game, just a single game. Um, and then I also got second in the whole city for uh, most receiving yards in a career. So, so that's, that is really wonderful. And you're getting ready to go to Hastings. Yeah. You excited about that? Yeah. <laughs> His career goes on. So thank you, folks. God bless you, and learn to be a receiver and learn to run your route.